So the problem asks us to journalize the following selected transactions for March in the two-column journal. So we'll read through the transactions and then go back and ask ourselves those questions that were on that are on your handout and were on the last page we were looking at. Okay, let's look at the first one. It says March the 1st we paid rent for the month of $1,500. So I have to ask myself, what accounts are involved when I'm paying rent? Well, is there, is there some type of account, going back and looking at these accounts, that has the word rent in it? There is, and it is rent expense. Um, and rent expense is what kind of account? It is an expense account. So if we go back and look at our sheet again with the rules of debits and credits, we see that expense accounts, if we increase them, we're going to debit, and if we decrease them, we're going to credit. Now one thing that I've had a little bit of trouble with getting students to understand in the past is that when they're paying expenses, they're actually increasing their expenses. You say, why is that? Well, I'm keeping track in my business of what I've paid for these various expenses. So later on, when I'm trying to do my financial statements, I know how much I've spent on expenses. So it's just keeping track so we know how much we, we spend. So we will be increasing the expense account rent, and any increases in expense accounts are recorded by debits. So here we will be increasing rent expense by $1,500. We're going to write it first. Actually, when you're working in the journal, the debits are always listed first. That's just one of those rules. If you go out there to work these problems uh, or a similar problem and you're work using an online lab, you'll need to remember that the debits always come first or you'll get the problem wrong, even if you analyze it correctly. So rent expense is our debit here because it's a, it is an expense account. And as we pay our expenses, we're uh, increasing our expense accounts. So we're going to debit our rent expense for $1,500. Okay, what did we pay this expense with? Well, if it doesn't tell us otherwise, we paid it with cash. Even if it's a check, it's considered coming out of the cash account, and every business will have a cash account. If not, something's really wrong. And sure enough, that is the first account that's listed up here in our chart of accounts. Okay, it, uh, cash is an asset. It's a resource owned by the business, and it is decreasing. So if we go back to our sheet with the rules of debits and credits, decreases in assets are recorded by credits. So we're going to credit cash for $1,500. I'm going to give you a little tip that, that I've always told my students when they're first learning how to analyze transactions. When you read a transaction, I know those four rules that I, that I mentioned to ask yourself. What accounts are involved? Did they increase or decrease? What account type are they? But if you, if you ask yourself this one additional question before you even start, it can really be a help. And that is, is cash involved in this transaction? So as we read the next one, paid advertising expense, is cash involved? If we paid it, we are always paying with cash, unless stated otherwise. Um, if cash is involved, then we already know one of our accounts will be using. If cash comes in, it's increasing. If it's going out, it's decreasing. So just like in the first transaction up here, um, we're paying some sort of expense, and the expense is increasing, and increases in expense accounts or debits, and we paid it with cash. Cash is decreasing, and decreases in cash are recorded by credits. So um, I'll go ahead and write up here advertising expense. And the date over here of March the 2nd is already filled in for you. And it was for um, $700. And again, we paid it with cash. Cash is an asset. It decreases in assets are recorded by credits. So we're going to credit cash for $700.
and we have an equal amount of debits and credits. All right, on the 5th of March, it says we paid cash for supplies. Well, if we go back up and look at our chart of accounts, is there some kind of account with the word supplies in it? There is. That's our supplies account. And it's grouped up there with our assets. Yes, supplies are an asset. They're a resource owned by the business, at least until we use them up. <clears throat> and so are, are supplies increasing or decreasing? As we buy supplies, they're increasing. So if we pay cash for supplies, that's just like we're, we're purchasing supplies. So we're getting supplies, so supplies are increasing. Supplies are an asset, so increases in assets are recorded by what? Go back and look on your sheet, and you'll see that increases in assets are recorded by debits. So we're going to debit supplies. For, um, $900 and it says we pay cash so cash is involved here is cash coming in or is it going out well if we're paying cash is going out so we'll be decreasing cash and decreases in assets are recorded by credits so we're going to credit cash for $900 We had a little rhythm going there because our first three transactions said we all paid. But when we get down to March the 6th, which is our next transaction, it says we purchased office equipment on account for $15,000. So when I ask myself if cash is involved, cash is not involved here. If we're purchasing on account, we're not using cash. Let's see if um, by the description we can uh, pick out uh, what our accounts would be. Well, we purchased office equipment. If we go back and look up office equipment in our chart of accounts up there, we see that it's grouped with the assets. Yes, office equipment is a resource owned by the business. It's an asset. Is it increasing or decreasing? It's increasing, right? Because we purchased office supplies, so we're getting, I'm sorry, office equipment, so we're getting more office equipment. So increases in assets are recorded by debits. So I'm going to be debiting office equipment for $15,000. Now we come to the next part of the transaction, which says we purchased it on account. Anytime you see that word on account, there are really only two accounts it could be. That's accounts receivable or accounts payable. So we have to figure out which one is this. Accounts receivable is money that our customers owe us. It's going to come in. We're going to receive it. Accounts payable, on the other hand, is a liability. That's money that we owe our vendors or our creditors. So when we're purchasing something on account, nobody's going to owe us, right? We're going to owe our vendors. So therefore, we would be using the account, accounts payable. Accounts payable, again, is a debt. It's a liability to the business. And if you look on your sheet, that shows you um, what to do with liability accounts. When we're taking on a liability, when we're purchasing something on credit, we're increasing our account. We're increasing what we're going to have to pay in the future. So increases in liabilities, if you'll notice, are recorded by credit. So we are going to credit accounts payable for $15,000. Going on down to the next transaction on the 10th, it says we received cash from customers on account. All right, so here it's telling we received cash. Cash is definitely involved here. And when we receive cash, is money coming in or is it going out? We receive it, it's coming in, right? So are we going to be increasing that account or decreasing it? If we receive cash from customers, 
we're going to be increasing our cash account and increases in assets are recorded by, you go back and look at your sheet, they're recorded by debits. So we're going to debit cash for $7,000. The amount the problem gives us. All right, then it says um, we received cash from customers on account. So remember I told you that says on account is either one of two accounts is either accounts receivable or accounts payable. Well, we're receiving cash from our customers. That must be money they owe us, right? Which would be accounts receivable. And so when they're paying us, is, uh, is accounts receivable, which is the amount of money they owe us, is that increasing or decreasing? Well, as they pay us on their account, the balance in their account should be going down, so we should be decreasing their account, and decreases in accounts receivable, which is an asset, would be recorded by credits. So I'm going to credit accounts receivable for $7,000. Going on down to the 15th of March, it says we paid a creditor on account. So again, we see that word on account. If we ask ourselves, was cash involved? Well, absolutely it was too because we paid. Anytime we pay, cash is involved and it's on account. So uh, when we're paying, who are we paying? Are we paying our vendors, our creditors? Or are we going to pay our customers? Well, if it's on account and we're having to pay, that must mean it's our vendors. So we would be using the accounts payable account, which is money that we owe to our creditors or vendors. Okay, the um, accounts payable account is a liability and um, decreases. It's decreasing, right? As we pay our creditor, our balance is going down. And so decreases in liabilities, if you go back and look at your sheet, um, decreases in liabilities are recorded by debits. So we're going to debit accounts payable for $1,500. Was cash involved here? It's a key question to always ask because sometimes, many times cash is involved. If we paid our creditor, we would have paid them with cash. Is cash increasing or decreasing? Well, if we're paying it and it's going out, cash is decreasing. So we would be um, crediting um, our cash account, which is an asset for, I've got this amount wrong here, it should be a thousand dollars. Let me go ahead and change that. We're going to be crediting cash for a thousand dollars. All right, we're moving on. We're getting toward the end of the month and it's the 27th now. So let me turn the page.